In this video, I'm going to be working on a 110 year old clock. That's 10 years older than my lawnmower. And in the middle, I'll be going out for a ride on my Kawasaki 500 twin. Hey, that's that clock I was telling you about um, from Victoria's grandparents. Do you have a look at it? It's not a motorbike. <laughs> Thanks. I brought the clock straight into my garage and put it on the bench. I opened the front to remove the pendulum and the top embellishment and put that to one side for later because the first thing I needed to do was to get the mechanism out and this is done by undoing two thumb screws underneath. This clock's 110 years old and I removed the actual mechanism and I was really surprised how clean it was. It was still quite shiny. It's obviously been stored in a nice environment for all these years. So the next thing I did was take the case and put it out of the way because I don't want to damage that while I'm working on the clock. The first thing I needed to do was to remove the dial so I can get to the back of the mechanism. So I set the hands to 12 o'clock and remove the securing pin. Then both the hands just pull off with a bit of a prize. The clock mechanism sits on a wooden beam, so I first had to remove that. That was held in place by two thumb screws. This gives some adjustment to centralise the dial within the wooden casing. The dial is secured to the mechanism by three pillars with tapered pins that just pull out with pliers. Once three pins are removed, the dial can simply be pulled off. With the dial removed, you can see the striking mechanism, but the first thing I notice is that one of the ratchets has got a weak spring. And this could cause a problem with the winding of the clock. So I remove the spring and give it a bit of a twist to make it stronger. There we go, that's much better. So I'll just replace that and that ratchet should now work. With the retention spring fitted, it works perfect. I'm well pleased with that. Although it did work before, it didn't work that great. It was a bit sloppy. So the next thing I needed to do was release, release the tension on the main spring for the clock. It seemed to have been overwound, so the internal friction on the spring can sometimes prevent the clock from actually working. So I gradually release the tension, and that's fine. So the next thing I'm going to do is give it a quick blow up on my airline, and then I'm going to oil all the pinions. But I haven't got any oil. I suddenly remembered I left it at my friend Neil's. Hello, is that Neil? Neil, do you remember about five months ago I came round and we fixed that E-type Speedo and I used my special clock oil? But I think I might have left it in your workshop. Could you have a quick look? Oh, you haven't thrown it away? What, you thought it was rubbish and it was, you thought, oh dear. Okay, never mind, don't worry. But if you can have a quick look, I'm going to come up anyway, I'll have a quick look. Thank you. Bye, Neil. I hadn't ridden my Kawasaki S3 500 Twin for quite a while, so I thought this was an idle opportunity to get it out and take it for a ride. <laughs> Neil, did you find that oil? 
I threw it away. Oh no, that means I can't. Kid. Oh, you're a star. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks very much. I must dash, I've got a clock to fix. <laughs> See you then. <laughs> I just got back from Neil's. That was a great ride on my Kawasaki 500 Twin. I'll be talking about that in more detail in a later video. But the main thing is, I've got the oil. With the oil back in my garage, I can now lubricate the pinions. This is special clock oil you can buy online. Just put a drop on each pinion, or use a toothpick to apply it, which is probably the better way of doing it. Otherwise too much comes out. But I wipe it off afterwards if it does. So I go around all the pinions and give them a good old lubrication and put a tiny bit on the gear teeth as well in a few places and all the pivots. And that's it. That's basically what you have to do. If it was quite dirty, I'd have to strip the whole clock and clean all the parts, but I didn't really need to do that in this occasion. So I left it in one piece, because it's just fine. While the dial was off, I decided to give it a bit of a clean. I just used some very mild furniture polish and some tissue and gave it a gentle rub because you can't really polish them too much because you take off the paint and take off the plating on the front. Anyway, I think the original patina looks nice. It is 110 years old. With the dial clean, I refit it to the mechanism, engaging the three pillars in the three holes and returning the tapered pins. I used my Swiss Army knife pliers to push the pins in tight. The two bottom pins were easy because they were near the outside of the clock, but the third one was buried down inside, so it took a little bit more of concentration to get it to engage and press in, but I got there in the end. The next thing I have to do is replace the hands. So I put the hour hand back on pointing at 12, followed by the minute hand, and then the washer and the retaining clip. It's really important that yeah, the hands are put back in the same place so they're in sync with the chimes. I check the chimes by winding it forward to 15 minutes past and it goes through one sequence. Perfect. So then I wind it to half past and it goes through two sequences. Perfect again. Then just to check, I wind it to quarter two and it goes through three sequences. So that's just great. The last thing to check is that when I line it up with two o'clock, it strikes twice. And it did. I'm well pleased with that. So now, let's see if it ticks. The first thing I have to do is put the mechanism across my vise and set it up with a spirit level so that it's level. Because it's no good if you set it up crooked, because the clock will be crooked on the wall. So you, you put your spirit level on the top and get the bubble in the centre. I had to use a few pieces of packing to do that, to make it square. Then, hang the pendulum and start it ticking. With the pendulum swinging, I'm listening to the tick and tock of the clock. It has to be even. If it's not even, you adjust the rocking pull on the escapement wheel at the top to adjust the actual length of the tick and the tock. When I was an apprentice, we had a special machine that listened to the mechanism and gave you the amount of adjustment, but I had to do it by ear. I removed the pendulum and gave the brass part of it a nice clean up with some fine steel wool. That's better. And then I used some metal polish with some tissue just to give it a bit of a sheen. And that's a lot better. I'm well pleased with that. Then I used some special wax polish on the wood to bring back the luster. This is amazing stuff. You wipe it on, it looks a bit dark at first, but when you actually polish it back, it goes back to the original colour and it gives it like an as new, really nice sheen. With the pendulum restored, I return it to the clock mechanism, set it swinging and go and get the case because it needs a bit of a clean up. You can't put this mechanism back in the dusty old case. I used some furniture polish on the glass. It works amazingly well. Give it a good rub with some tissue and it's really clear now. It adds like a layer of slime on the inside, possibly from the oil that's evaporated from the clock mechanism over all those years. I then treat the inside with the wax polish as, as I did with the pendulum. It brings it up like new and a bit on the side. See how dark it is? But when you rub it back, it comes back to the original colour. Amazing stuff. I used a small paintbrush on the top embellisher 
with the wax to get into all the little crevices. So if you use a cloth, you can't and it looks awful. So you do this and it brings it back really nice and then buff it all off the best you can. Obviously you can't get right into the corners, but that just dries off nicely and that just fits on top. With all the woodwork polished, I noticed the brass plaque on the front. This clock was presented to a sergeant instructor, Jay Miles, in December 1908. I turn round and look at the clock mechanism ticking in the vise, and I notice there's a slight click in the tick that shouldn't be there, and the actual pendulum bracket itself, the slot in it, seems to have been bent out. So I get my pliers and give them a quick squeeze in, and that's a lot better, because you don't want any play there, or you don't want too much play there, because it'll affect the way the pendulum swings. So now I get my metal polish to polish up that brass plaque. With the case all clean and nice, I return the clock mechanism, slotting it into place and doing up the two thumb screws, first carefully removing the pendulum. As I slide the mechanism down back into the clock case, I check that the striking hammers engage with the striking chimes, and then I return it to the wall and hang it on its hook. With the clock hanging nicely on the wall, I reattach the pendulum and set it swinging. With the pendulum swinging nicely, you listen to the tick and tock and get it even. And then I check the chimes worked. At quarter past, it chimed perfect. So I'm well pleased with that. So now I can leave it running overnight. And in the morning when I came down, it was slightly fast. So I have to lengthen the pendulum a little bit by adjusting the screw on the bottom. It's trial and error, but it was quite a way out, about 10 minutes. So I moved it down about half a millimeter. Making the pendulum longer makes it tick slower, which slows the clock down. But anyway, now it's running just great. So I'll keep an eye on it for a couple of days to make sure that time is keeping well. And then it can go back to Victoria's grandparents.